Okay, hello media. Hello media. Um, this is the Broken Blade Scrum from G2. Uh, as usual, please use a hand raise feature to um, ask your questions. Alternatively, drop them in the chat function. Um, so we'll, talk, uh, we'll start off with Dan Emil. Hello, first of all, my heart goes out to you after this series. You were an absolute menace in these games. So I have to ask, do you think that making the decision of going for Baron buried the dream this time? Um, I don't really... Which, which Baron? I believe the game three Baron where uh you guys lost the fight. Um oh yeah. Uh, I mean obviously <laughs> in hindsight it's something that basically what happened was that we thought they had no TPs and then they had TP and then we lost the fight because of that. So in hindsight, yeah, it was it was very bad and and, and troll and Probably wouldn't have done that if he knew he Rumble had no TP. So um, yeah, it was game losing, right? Uh, but these kind of things happen if you miss uh, miss time st stuff and like especially key key things. So on hindsight, it was very very bad. We thought they had no TPs when we rise also on the mid to play before. Okay, moving on to the next questions from Sons of Chaos. Thank you very much. I'm Eugenio from Sons of Chaos Latin. I feel so sorry about this loss of G2. And it feels a little bit unlucky to have a such difficult opponents during the CC stage, but this period of that, what they're taking, after, taking away after this tournament sadly ends for G2. Uh, I mean, my main takeaway is that I mean, sadly just just not good enough to, to, to beat these teams, um, yeah, our road was not easy. Many people say we were unlucky, but if you want to be the best, we have to beat these teams. Those are the teams that will contest you to be the best, and we, we just couldn't. And it's it's very sad because we got close many times, which is even more sad. Because it was close, I think I would be happier now if we would get would have gotten stomped these games. So going out... Like this is 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 definitely sad. It's something that, yeah, probably if we could have a, a different road, we could have made it further in the tournament. But in the end, if you are not strong enough to beat teams like PLG and HLE, then we don't deserve to be the best. And I think the the draw is just a, a recipe of like the Swiss stage. Some people get lucky, some people get unlucky. But in the end, if if you're good, then they will beat luck. And we were not good enough. Thank you very much for the answer and send you a big hook. Thank you. Okay, next question from Quain, Toy Bao. Um, hi, Broken Blade. Uh, first of all, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, so uh, I'm Quan from Toy Bao, La La East Road, Vietnam. And unlucky that G2 was defeated by PLG. Uh, and uh, they are LPL top seed and a strong contender for the championship. So I want to ask about the last game, uh, the game three, that handsome uh, foul. There was a bug or uh, an error with the Kalista champion during the crucial the team fight, which seemed to impact G2 spirits and focus. And how did that moment affect the team? And do you think it had a significant role in the result of the match? Thank you. Um, well, initially we thought that there was a bug, so Hans was very sure that uh, there was a bug in the game, so obviously he should pause for it, like he was very certain, and then in hindsight he just uh, did not see that he used E on, on, on Silas. So, yeah, I mean, it did obviously make the game a bit more weird, we... But the position after the fight, whether it's a pause or not, was very losing because they would have gotten Nash no matter what. And then they would have gotten to go 
a group up, which we don't really want with Rice. We want to split. And it's it's almost late game, and Ezreal is very fat at this point in the game. So regardless of the pause or not, I think the game will be very, very hard. It will be very difficult. We would probably be a bit more serious, but I think winning from that position is super difficult. Uh, we could have done it. Um, my TP was not great in the end, and uh, and then they just ace us. But uh, yeah, I don't think it made a difference. Okay. Uh, thank you for your answer. So good luck in the next year, LEC. And I hope to see a better G2 in the next world. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm done right here. Thank you. Uh, next question from Felipe at Maisie Sports. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's okay to hear me? Yes. Oh, sure. Uh, I feel sorry for the loss today. And as a Brazilian, it should be nice to see Rodrigo in playoffs. But my two questions are about this Nocturne and the Rihanna decision from the game one. Uh, first of all, why do you guys have chosen it? Locking Ariana as a first pick and letting BRG comes back with Skarner and Jax to strongest picks in this meta? And second, we saw this common matches against 2-1, 2, and like today, a lot of commentators here in Brazil and in the American transmission, American broadcast, they said it hasn't worked even today or in, against 2-1. What was the idea behind this combo being chosen three times? Um, we were doing very well with it um, in, in, in practice. I mean, that's the basic TLDR. We were confident that we are going to win the game, even if we play, even after the loss against G1. Uh, we still believed it was very, very strong and we should play it again. And in the first game, we played Nocturne, Oriana. They they built, they built a very, very strong comp against it. They had, as you said, Jack Skarna with a, with a peeling um, AD carry, which is Kaisa and... Alistair, who's probably one of the best um, champions to, to, to negate the fights. So I think they drafted, they just drafted really, really well into what we wanted to do. And I think that's a big, big reason why we lost the first game. I think I think in the other games, our drafts were much, much stronger. I, I believe in game two and three, I believe we had the superior drafts. Yeah, next question from Cloud, Sidki. Hey, Broken Blade. Uh, sorry about, you know, the loss. I think everyone was cheering for you. I think, especially this year, it seemed like um, very different than previously when G2 or North America would lose. It, people would be making fun of us, making fun of you guys. This year is probably the first time in a long time where I've seen hundreds of thousands of people like sharing their love and support for you guys. Um, my question was about uh, when when you beat T, uh, TES, at MSI, you were saying that what you guys wanted to do is give the West hope. And when you lost to T1 afterwards, you said that you didn't want that to let that hope be crushed, um, even though, you know, what happened happened. Uh, do you have any similar words today after, you know, being cl close, but, you know, ultimately not close enough? Uh, I mean, it's a very tough question to answer. Obviously, we did not do better than... Last year, even though I feel like we were playing much, much better than last year, if you compare the games. So it's, I just feel like a bit guilty of not being able to show that. I don't have regrets for this year. I, I think we truly, every single player gave it their best. And staff member, everyone involved gave their best and all. And I believe we were much, much stronger than last year. But it, it it still wasn't enough to be the best, and that for us, I mean, the the best thing we can take from this is is motivation to do better next time, and not let this victory crush our hopes. If yeah, if that helps you. Okay, we're gonna have to make these the last two questions. We'll go to Ash. Um. B, with this elimination, I think uh, many people are regarding G2 as a top eight team. And I know you said that for you, uh, being the best is all that matters. But now two years in a row being eliminated in the Swiss stage of um, of Worlds, this potentially is one of the strongest rosters to never make uh, the quarterfinals. So I, I'm interested to hear your like you equivocating a little bit on uh, or like elaborating a little bit on the idea that you need to be the best in that top eight 
doesn't matter if you're eliminated in this way, I suppose. I'd love to hear a little more. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think like a like a player's dream should be to win worlds, and especially for me as a player who never really like made it out of of groups in worlds, it, this is something very like shattering. Like I'm I'm feeling very bad about this fact because I do believe that every single year I have gotten better in in terms of performance. At the international international stage, uh, but yeah, for me, if you don't, if you made if you made quarters by be, by beating NA and then just lost to the very next team, for me, it wouldn't feel great. I wouldn't feel I, would, I wouldn't feel better about losing in quarters than, than losing right now because if you're not good enough to beat PLG or HLE, then we're probably not gonna win worlds, and that is the sad. And true fact that that occurred in this world, so I think we came close, and that is something that people can hold on to. But for 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 me and for us, this is not what we wanted. We wanted to win, and and we did, we got close many times, which is quite sad because it wasn't enough to 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 go further. And for me, it's it's a bit weird to say. Losing here or losing in, in semis or quarters doesn't make a difference because I never made it there. But I, in my imagination, it wouldn't feel any different because I, in, in the end, if, if my true aspiration is to win worlds, then that is what my attitude has to be and how I have to think, in my opinion. Thank you. And final question we'll go over to Cecilia. Hello, BB Cecilia for Esports News UK. I wanted to ask you something about the future. Next year in 2025, Riot is going to implement a third international tournament. Now, it's often said that more international tournament means more scrims and more practice for all teams across regions to compete against you know, other teams from other regions. Do you think that the changes with the international tournament, with the new international tournament, will lead European and Western teams to maybe close in the gap between Eastern teams? Um, I mean, definitely it will help. I think this is something uh, beautiful, right? Like being able to scrim against the best teams in the world is just always nice. I, I'm always excited. I think for the last three years, We've been winning so many scrims in Europe, and every time we go international, it it, it always comes closer to like a fifty percent win rate. I mean, this world was uh, kind of like that, and uh, it's it's yeah. I think I think it would be great. I I I don't think just scrimming the teams will necessarily make it better anyway. I think every single player has to put in the work, the extra work, um, to be better. I think that is a fact because, yeah, I mean, we, we have been screaming at these against these uh, Eastern teams for, for, for since Worlds is, is there, I believe, at least whenever I was in international tournaments. So I think it depends on, on each individual player and obviously also the team itself. Thank you for your time. Good luck for next year. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes the scrum of Broken Blade. Uh, thank you, BB, for joining, and thank you uh, to Press for joining as well.